gotta let, like literally kind of be like two different people, but separate your personal life from your your business. And it's not always easy to do, you know, because but some some people don't know how to separate the character they created for for, for themselves from the personal life, and that's why their life don't be working out. Cause they just stay that that that, that character they, they they remain that character the whole time. I don't know how to go home and be a good dad or a good husband. You know what I mean? So when did you realize you needed to separate them? Oh, uh, it took me a while. <laughs> I think I think I'm still I'm learning that every day still. It, it, you can never perfect that one. That's something that is not easy to do. You know what I mean? It's not it's not something like oh, because sometimes I've been I've been in places. And people be like, they be asking me, are you not turning up? Like, no. <laughs> so sometimes I don't turn the light switch on. <laughs> so I still, I'm still trying to perfect. Okay. Yeah, I've always uh, wondered about that because I've seen it myself hundreds of times, thousands of times. But yeah. how people think they know you because they know your art, but they know right. that part of you. They don't know. Right. Actually, they don't actually know the you. Whole part of you. Right. I remember one time I went to uh, Mississippi, and you know they called me all kind of stuff, Nat Turner, all kinds of stuff. So anyway, this chick when I did a show in Mississippi, the I was with David Banner, and this chick said, "Nantucket, I got all your music, Nantucket." I said, "Isn't that cough syrup? I mean, isn't that like the syrup you put on pancakes, Nantucket syrup?" And she's like, "Nantucket, they call you Nantucket. I got all your albums, Nantucket." I said, "What?" I said, "Okay." She said, "Can you sign up?" And she said, what she had is a bunch of bootlegs. And on, on the bootlegs in Mississippi, it said Nantucket. And it was my music. <laughs> really? <laughs> it, didn't say, it didn't say Nocturnal. It said Nantucket. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> so I was, I, was, I was Nantucket in Mississippi. I wasn't Nocturnal. <laughs> wow. I don't care. They call me what they want to call me. Just don't call me late for the check. Now, I was about to say, as long as you're getting the show money, you're good. Right. I'm good. Yes. So also with Damien Young, you did the So Dope song as Mariah Carey on there, him on there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, and a lot of people didn't even realize that I, I, I wrote that hook for Mariah Carey. It was like, dang, you did a song with Mariah Carey? I was like, yeah. And you know Mariah Carey, she's a little sometimes. But she, she's still a wonderful person. She just, you know, she likes what she wants and she wants. She the only person I told that I saw tell somebody, because her favorite color is orange. She said to them, on the on the writers that she wanted, she said, "I want a big vase full of orange M and M's." You know how many bags of M and M's you got to get to get a whole big old vase this big with orange M and M's in it? It was one blue M and M in there out of the whole thing. She picked it up and got mad and threw it at, at the PR people. Threw it at the people like, "Then I say I want all orange M and M's." I like, "Oh yeah, I'm about to go sit back over here on this side of the room." <laughs> Absolutely. We love you still, Mariah. We love you. But it was only one. I saw one blue. She's like, she saw blue and she said, this is some bullshit. I picked it up and flung it. But do you know how many bags of M&M's they had to go get to get all orange M&M's? That's crazy. Yeah, but that's what she wanted. They got it for. You know, she's she's the, the R&B singer that sold the most records out of any female. So she, she definitely going to get what she wants. Yeah. That's that's an icon in the game right there, for sure. Right. Every time she come out, everybody, and you know she could play. She she could break a glass with her voice. I've seen her do it. Really? Yeah, she really can break a glass with her voice. She can break a, cha- a champagne glass with her voice. I, I sat there with her and seen her do it. I was, I was like, well, I heard you do it. Let me let me see. And she showed it to me. I was like, whoa, she really can do that. Because Damian Young is the one that told me she could do that. I thought he was, I thought he was bull crap, right? So I, you know, my dumb butt, I wanted to see. So and she did it. I was like, "Whoa!" Scared of her. Yeah, I never, I never would have thought that that would be uh, something you could just do at a at a moment's notice. That's crazy. Oh, she, she can. She did it when I told. Her, I said, "Give me your tongue." So I put the champagne glass down. I'm like, "You can do that for real." Let me see. She just was like, it starts hitting this really high note, and she just went and just leaned in towards the glass and hit the note. And it held it for like five seconds, and it busted. I was like, "Whoa, that's crazy!" Wow, that is wild. It was phenomenal, man. It, it made my dick jump. 
Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. And then uh, after The Way I Am, you know, you've had lots of success and stuff at that point, writing your own material, different things. So yeah. what, uh, how come you didn't stay with Electra for longer? Well, Ty Warner sold um, Electra to Lee Orr. As soon as the way I, as soon as the way I'm out, album came out, you know, I sold out. You know, um, I sold out of records around the globe in the first weekend alone. And Lee Orr, uh, what, what happened? Lee Orr, oh, was, Lee Orr fired the whole um, 400 people from the rap division at Electra. Fired the whole rap division and took it back to a heavy, heavy metal uh, and rock. Uh, label, which he was originally at first anyway, until the hip hop came about. So he fired everybody, and uh, but he let everybody go, debt and obligation free. You know, Buster Rhymes was there, Fabulous was there, I was there, uh, Missy Ellie was there, Little Mo was there, it was a bunch of us there. You know what I mean? But he let us he let us all go, uh, Leroy let us all go, debt and obligation free, he fired the whole rap department. So when it became time to Order some more nocturnal albums. It was nobody in and at Electra to, to even contact because everybody from the rap department was, was fired. Yeah, you know? so I had to make a new way. Hmm. Time water sold to Lior. That's crazy. And I guess Lior said, uh, "F that rap." <laughs> he must don't like rap music. <laughs> well, he was doing other things, that's for sure. So right. then, uh. So then for the next several years doing different things, how then did the Knoxville end up having it? Uh, well, I met these uh Armenian uh cats by the name one one of the names uh you know, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not worried about saying his name, but these Armenian cats and they had a record label called Treacherous. And uh it was, you know, a, a Black Panther on top of the on top of the world. And so Big Psych uh and Crooked, I was signed to them. And Big Sock and Crooked is actually the ones that pulled me into them. You know what I mean? It was like, man, come over here since you ain't, then le since the lecture was falling and fell with uh, the rap division, just come over here. You know what I mean? So I just went over to, to Treacherous instead of instead of remaining with uh, LA Confidential because I wasn't uh, getting paid all my money like I see. You know, most times rappers get messed up because they don't know the business, you know what I mean? All the way, but I know it now, but. Back then, I didn't know when I found out I was getting ripped off and all that stuff. That's neither, neither here nor there. I'm all right. But so I was already even LA Confidential anyway. So I just went over to Treacherous Records. You know what I mean? With the Armenian dudes. It was cool. Yeah. Okay. And then how and why did you, how did you end up getting the, uh, the scoring deal? How did that develop? The deal for what? They're doing the soundtracks in the movies. So, um, a lady named Yolanda McIntosh from New Jersey, she knew the um, the movie director, and uh, he and she knew he was about to uh, sign a 10-movie deal. And Ma Yolanda McIntosh used to be my manager, and, and, the, and the Robert Parham, the director, he's from New Jersey, so she knew him, so she put me and him together. And, you know, I, that's the first movie I get, got in was so Black. I only had, like, four quick scenes. In, in Snow Black movie, so I only had like four quick scenes in the Snow Black soundtrack. But that's the first time I've ever been in a movie. But he just said, well, "Hey man, I got two movies to do. If you want to go ahead and do them, so that's that's how that came back." And me and Robert Pine, we hit it off. He's cool. He's cool dude. Yeah, congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So you got Night Vision, uh, the new EP, and. Uh, you got these movies going on. Are there other things people should be checking for right now? Oh, yeah. Um, they need to look for, excuse me, Closed Line Called Street Brokers is right here. You can get that to uh, The Real Mash or P, P. Wilson at streetbroker.com. Streetbroker That's the new Closed Line coming up. You can get it in uh, any kind of color you want. And... If you're female and you want it, you want to be called a street broker, you get a hard to top, you get some booty shorts. So, I mean, call and ask them what you want, and they're going to get it to you. <laughs> there it is. Look up the real nocturnal. I mean, look up the real, the real mash. Oh, uh, look up mash for real, excuse me. At Gmail, and you can look up P, P. Wilson, P. Wilson 
and Gmail, and or you can order the clothes. It's called Street Booker. Here it goes. You got top, so you, got, you want a hat, the shirt, then they got the pants. So I mean, they got they got the whole set. And if and if you're a female, you want a hot top, or you want some booty shorts, hit them up and tell them what you want. They they'll get it to you. Okay. And also with your writing, I've always been intrigued, and you mentioned this earlier, but I wanted to build on it a minute because uh, we got to talking about other things. But when you were writing for other people, you were saying how you would listen to a lot of their other material. So for yourself, how do you, what do you draw from and has that changed over the years? I just try to make sure uh, when I write, I try to make sure I don't sound like nobody else. I, I mean, I listen to other people's stuff and I try to make sure I, I'm not mimicking anybody. I don't sound like anybody. I try to make sure I keep it to where I separate myself from the way everybody else sounds on purpose. I don't want to sound like nobody else. You know what I mean, I don't want to mimic nobody. I want to sound like nocturnal. That's where I've always been. Nobody can sound like me. I'm, I sound like myself. I mean, people could try, but it, it don't work for them. It don't work out too well. <laughs> That's just That's the way you see. are. That's yeah, the way I am. <laughs> and they can't get like me. <laughs> yeah, give me a shout out in the song, Knock. <laughs> right, it's no problem. I got you. I got you. Okay. Well, there it is. Well, anything else, uh, Knock, you want to add before we bounce? Uh, I'm about to do West Coast Wednesdays. Uh, probably twice a week. Look forward to something. It's, it's going to be on uh, YouTube. Uh, they believe uh, maybe Channel 4. But um, uh, also, uh, if anybody wants to subscribe, they can subscribe to also my YouTube page. Uh, it's under The Real Nocturnal. And that'll be all good. Everything's cool. All right. Well, there it is. Well, Knock, thanks for coming through, man. Really appreciate it. Not a problem at all, brother. Just have me back again when my album get out. I want you to listen real close to me. I'm gonna ask you some real simple questions and I want some real simple answers. Do you understand? Yeah. Do you understand? Yes, I, I understand. You said that you couldn't have possibly been at the crime scene at 11.15 because you went to a bookstore buying my audio book and my hardcover book at 11.15 when the crime scene occurred in Soren's book. The history of gangster rap. So you couldn't have been at the crime scene because you were buying the books. Right, right. At 11.15, I was, I was at the bookstore at, at 11.15 and when, when I, bought, I bought the books and accidentally left them at the store. So at 11.15, you couldn't have been at the crime scene because you were buying books, right? At 11.15, I was, we, we was, when I was leaving, it was, it was some people coming in, and I, I, I forgot to grab But you, you, you don't remember who what they look people, like. What would they look like or nothing, right? No. Hmm. So. Twelve fifteen. You went to the bookstore buying my audio book and hardcover book and Soren's book at twelve fifteen. So you couldn't have been at the scene because you were buying the books, right? Yeah, at twelve exactly. At twelve at twelve fifteen exactly. I was at the bookstore. <laughs> You know you know fucked up. Which which one? Well, first you said you were at the bookstore at eleven fifteen, and then you said it was twelve fifteen. You know you know fucked up. Man. He fucked up. Yeah, he fucked up. He fucked up. 
Man, you you confusing me, man. So, you get my book, my audio book, 40 years, and Soren's book, History of Gangster Rap, and if you don't, you know you're not fucked up, right? Man, the more those cops ask me questions, the more I wish I bought them motherfucking books.